The two most reliable computer models, the GFS as well as the European model, are now in agreement that this tropical disturbance coming off the West African coast will eventually develop into a hurricane as it approaches the Caribbean. Taking a look at the latest run of the GFS model, by the time we approach the Tuesday time frame, right around four days from now, you're going to see that this storm's pressure will drop down to 989 millibars, which is equivalent to, I'll say, a low-end Category 1 hurricane where the wind speed should hover around 75 to 80 miles per hour. But it doesn't stop there. We see that even headed into the Wednesday time frame, this continues to rapidly intensify where now the pressure drops down to the low 980s and eventually the pressure drops even more down to the low 980s. 70s which would be equivalent to a category 3 hurricane which is very concerning and even down to 900 on um, the 960 millibar range we see this storm strengthen which it would definitely be very concerning if this were to move further southward towards the caribbean the good news out of this however is that currently the gfs model wants to steer this away from the caribbean island so um, puerto rico and potentially hispaniola wouldn't get directly impacted from this storm system which would certainly be the best case scenario but there's still a lot of time to really iron out the forecast it really all depends on how much ridging will be just the north of this storm because of course if the ridging is a little bit stronger we'd see more uh, stronger easterly flow which would steer this storm towards the Caribbean islands and that could potentially be devastating if it were to make landfall or directly impact you guys at um, this strength where the millibar pressure is around 963 millibars however what the gfs model is currently stating is that we're going to see a trough that's going to dip down through the middle atlantic and that's going to open an area where the wind where the wind direction will shift from more of a southerly direction and that would steer the storm further northward and eventually out to sea not really impacting any um any land directly which would certainly be good news maybe bermuda could experience some rough surf or um and also the caribbean islands even if this doesn't directly impact you guys but you would miss out on most of the impacts the European model, while it's also expecting this tropical disturbance to eventually develop into a low-end hurricane, it isn't as confident that, that it's going to strengthen as much, which you might consider that as good news. However, there seems to be a consensus from the computer models that if this storm ends up being weaker than anticipated, we're more likely to see the storm move further southward and impact the Caribbean islands, which would certainly not be good news. And moving forward with the forecast, let me move on to the 12Z run to go into the more long-term future. We see that for the most part, head into the Wednesday time frame and eventually Thursday, the storm maintains its strength as a low-end tropical storm before eventually it develops to near hurricane status or at hurricane status by the time it's just the east of the of puerto rico however the thing that's the most concerning with the european model scenario is that it wants to bring it slightly further southward it isn't so far south enough to the point where it's directly impacting puerto rico or any other caribbean islands but it's but it's suddenly uncomfortably close and any sh small shift with the European model scenario could bring direct impacts to some of the Caribbean islands, which would definitely be a pretty major concern um, that we'd see a hurricane this early in the hurricane season. But the, Euro the European model eventually does expect this to steer just north of the Caribbean islands, but still a high amount of uncertainty. Don't be surprised if we see shifts between the computer models regarding if this can move further south or for further northward depending on how much ridging there is and look at the forecast hour i'm going at this is over 200 hours out so this is when the forecast becomes highly uncertain so it there's so it's far um so you shouldn't at least um you shouldn't at least not be aware of this storm for the caribbean because this could easily still directly impact you guys if the forecasts do shifts with um, which is likely over the next several days since the, this forecast is subject to change when the forecast hour is so far out. So I'll definitely keep you guys updated. Take a look at the 500 millibar height anomaly throughout the northern Atlantic. So the key of whether or not this storm will make landfall somewhere in the Caribbean islands will be 
um, will be this ridge located right over eastern Canada. Right now, we see that there's just enough of a dip in the jet stream and we do see an upper level low that's located just south of this ridge that's going to attempt to steer the storm further northward. This low is going to be the primary catalyst that's going to steer uh, that's going to shift the wind direction to more of a southerly direction which would help steer the storm out to sea rather than move westward towards the Caribbean islands. Now, if this low pressure system does somehow doesn't move as far south or moves a little bit further eastward, then we could see this ridge build a little more and we see a stronger easterly flow that would push the storm towards the Caribbean islands. But if we see this low remain at around um, this area and in fact um, if it does even become stronger than anticipated or move further southward than anticipated then we're less likely to see direct impacts throughout the Caribbean islands so the position of this low pressure system will be key and the and exactly how far south this Trawful dip will be key in determining the exact trajectory of this storm. The stronger the ridge, the more likely this will move further westward. But the stronger this dip, the more likely this is expected to move northward and out to sea, not directly impacting anybody. So we're definitely going to keep in mind of how this ridge will build over eastern Canada over the next several days. We see that the European model expects this trough to move just south enough to steer away from the Caribbean islands, which would certainly be good news. But again, we need to see if the European model persists on this idea. Taking a look at the 500 millibar geopotential height anomaly for, um, from the GFS model, and we clearly see why the GFS model wants to steer a lot further northward and out to sea a lot quicker. And it's because this trough dips a lot further southward, and it's a lot closer in proximity to this storm system to steer the wind flow towards the um, a, su a southwesterly direction to steer this out to sea and further away from the Caribbean islands than the European model. Again, we're going to need to see this trough dip a little bit less southward and see this trough move a little bit further northward for this storm to directly impact the Caribbean islands, which would certainly not be good news. And we need and for this storm to move further westward, this ridge will need to get much stronger. So we're definitely going to need to pay close attention to how the ridging and this um, dip in the jet stream will um, will be by the time we approach next week. And I'll keep you guys updated regarding any changes with the forecast, which is likely since there are still uh, plenty of days to really get this forecast certain and get this forecast accurate enough to determine if the islands will experience direct impacts or not. The strength of this storm as it approaches the Caribbean will also play a role in the trajectory of this storm because the stronger it is, the more likely the cloud tops and the overall circulation of this storm will be a lot higher and move further upwards towards the upper levels of the atmosphere and that would allow the upper level winds to have more of an effect when it comes to the steering of this storm since the cloud tops are a lot higher with a stronger storm and we see that the a part part of the reason why the gfs model wants to bring the storm further northward than the european model is because it expects a much stronger storm and we see that the upper level winds will play a much bigger role in steering this further northward because there is expected to be an upper level high located just to the east of this low pressure system and look at the direction of the upper level winds coming from the south which would force this storm a lot further northward since it's a lot stronger the upper level winds will have more in a, in a, of an effect since the cloud tops will be higher associated with a stronger storm and and this wouldn't directly impact the Caribbean islands. So when we're talking about the strength of a storm system, it would typically be bad news if we were to see a storm strengthen. But in this scenario, it would it possibly be good news if this storm were to strengthen a little bit stronger because that would mean it would be more likely to not directly impact the Caribbean islands. But again, the upper level wind steering flow could be offset from a surface level high that could still steer it to the west if it were a little bit stronger despite 
the upper level winds moving to the south. So the upper level winds won't be um, um, won't be the only steering flow we're going to need to worry about when ta um, when talking about the trajectory of this storm system. We are also going to need to pay close attention to the surface level winds because those could easily offset the effects the upper level winds could have on the steering of the storm. So make sure to keep that in mind when at least um, forecasting different scenarios as a storm approaches the Caribbean. When it comes to a wind shear forecast for the European model, you're going to see that the European model expects a decent amount of wind shear to exist over this storm system. However, it isn't expected to be enough to necessarily disorganize it as it continues ahead further westward. We do see that this will maintain its strength despite the moderate wind shear right over it. And, it's, and by the time this approaches the Caribbean, the wind shear should be just light enough for this to strengthen a little bit more to organize a bit more for more convection to occur, the surface pressure to lower, and of course, wind speed to increase as we see that exactly. And since this storm is weaker, the upper level winds aren't having as much of an effect in steering this further northward. So we see this move a lot further southward, uncomfortably close to the Caribbean islands. So the strength, like I said, will play a big role in terms of the intensity. So that's definitely something to keep in mind over the next several days. But it does seem like the wind shear will have a major effect on the strength of this storm. As I'll say, it's more likely than not this will eventually de develop into a hurricane by the time this is just right at the Caribbean island's doorstep. The European model expects a weaker storm than the GFS model because the European model is still um, is still more confident that there's going to be more stable air, which will of course limit the amount of convection around the center of circulation due to an uh, temperature inversion that stable air typically brings, which keeps the surface and very warm and moist air mass along the surface rather than rising up aloft to condense and create the latent heat required for a chuckle cyclone and as we do see that right here but again this dry air won't necessarily be enough to deter this storm from potentially developing into a strong tropical storm or hurricane where the moisture is in its own little bubble and we do see that um, if we were to take a look at the wind direction just to the west of this storm where the dry air is located the wind direction is moving more towards from a northeasterly direction, which is pushing the, the dry air away from the center of circulation rather than towards the center of circulation, which is certainly helping to fend off this dry air around the center of circulation for this storm to continue to intensify. Comparing it to the GFS model, we see the clear difference. The GFS model doesn't expect as much dry air to exist right over the main development region as well as the Caribbean, which is the reason why it wants to develop this into a major hurricane eventually, which is definitely very concerning. Um, but the good news is that the computer models want to take this away from the islands, but still a lot of time to iron out that forecast. I'll keep you guys updated over the next several days. Here's a probability the National Hurricane Center is now giving this of developing into a tropical cyclone. We see that this now has a 70% chance of developing over the next seven days. So it is more likely at this point. And I will say based on the consensus we've been seeing from the computer models, it is more likely that we're going to see a hurricane eventually develop as this moves further westward. Taking a look at the GFS ensemble members and what they're forecasting when it comes to the trajectory as well as the strength of this storm system as it moves westward, we do see that a majority of them want to take this towards hurricane status and it does become more concerning when we take a look at the ensemble members because they're a lot further southward um, which would potentially bring more impacts to the Caribbean islands. So there's still a lot of time. Um, I want to show you guys this because there's still a lot of different scenarios of where exactly the storm could move. It isn't just what the current GFS model run is stating. There could be multiple scenarios anywhere within these ensemble members of where the storm could go. And we still have a good chance this could move towards the, I the island. So uh, definitely at least be aware of this if you're right around the Caribbean. Taking a look at the European ensemble members, we do see a clear difference when it comes to the tropical storm scenarios moving northward um, and the ones moving southward. 
we see that the more nor the stronger storms tend to move um, further northward while the weaker um, storm scenarios are moving further southward because like I said the stronger the storm is by the time this approaches the Caribbean the upper level winds would steer it further northward and we exactly see this right here so the strength of this storm could be um, definitely good news the stronger it gets since it's more it would be more likely to avoid the Caribbean islands so we're definitely gonna pay close attention to the strength um, as this continues to head further westward and here's the forecast for a potential um, tropical storm or, or potentially hurricane Brett in the more long-term future so um, keep in mind take this with a big grain of um, salt um, um, forecasting the strength forecast is fairly difficult so this but this is my best estimation of what the strength will be as the storm system continues ahead further westward based on what the computer models are stating so i don't expect this to develop into tropical storm strength until tuesday which is around four days from now and then from tuesday beyond once the wind shear really winds down and once this storm system really gets a wall organized center a circulation then we're more likely to see this storm rapidly intensify from there where i ex expect this storm currently to reach nearly category two status by the time it's right at the caribbean islands doorstep and where it goes from there remains to be seen but i'll keep you guys updated but i uh, thank you guys for watching and make sure to subscribe if you want to see more weather related content